In this video, we take another look at sensors in a bit more detail. This video identifies the type of data captured by each sensor you need to know about, including examples of selecting the most suitable sensor for a given context. Now we're going to assume you've already watched and are comfortable with the content in our video, Sensors Part 1. So if you haven't seen it yet, go back and watch that first. So a recap from the previous video, sensors can be designed to detect the levels of a wide variety of conditions. And you're actually required to know about the following 14 in the exam. So let's take a brief look at each of them now. So we'll start with the acoustic sensor. This is essentially a microphones and they convert detected sound into a digital format. Typical examples of where these sensors might be used are detecting dripping liquids from faulty factory pipes and detecting noise made by an intruder on security system. Next, we have the accelerometers. These measure the acceleration and motion of an object, i.e. the change in velocity. These are often used in cars, detecting sudden deceleration in order to deploy the airbags and in mobile phones to detect if the phone is being held in portrait or landscape. The next is flow sensors. These measure the flow rate of a liquid or gas in motion and produces an output based on the amount passing over the sensor. These are commonly used to measure flows in pipes like natural gas lines. And in hospital, it's used in respiratory devices and inhalers. Next up are gas sensors. And these use various methods to detect levels of a particular given gas, for example, oxygen or carbon dioxide. They can monitor levels of oxygen and carbon dioxide, for example, in a greenhouse, monitor pollution levels above a city, an airport or a factory, and monitor the amount of oxygen levels in a car's exhaust. Next up is humidity sensors. Now, these shouldn't be confused with sensors that detect moisture that we'll look at in a moment. These sensors measure the amount of water vapour, for example, in a body of air. These are commonly used in high precision production facilities to monitor the amount of humidity in the air, for example, a factory producing electronics, and also for monitoring humidity levels in a greenhouse. Now, next we have infrared sensors, and we're actually going to split those into what we call active and passive because although you actually only need to technically know about infrared sensors in the exam, they come on to very different things depending on whether we're using active or passive infrared. So with active, it's an invisible beam of infrared radiation that's picked up by a detector. If the beam is broken by an object, the, descent, the detector senses the drop in radiation levels. This is commonly used in security systems, detecting when an intruder breaks the infrared beam. And it can be used in vehicles to automatically turn on windscreen wipers when rain is detected on the windscreen. Switching to infrared passive sensors, this measures the heat radiation given off by an object. Security systems can use this to detect the body heat of an intruder. Firefighters use it for detecting human bodies in very smoky environments. And it can be used to monitor the temperature inside industrial freezers. Next up comes level sensors. Now these can be ultrasonic, conductive, optical or mechanical in nature, but they all serve the same purpose and that's to detect the levels of a substance, for example, the level of water in a water tank. Vehicles make use of this to monitor levels of petrol in the petrol tank. The pharmaceutical industry uses it for monitoring the powder level for when making tablets. They could be used to detect a drop in liquid levels due to leaks. Next up, we have light sensors. Now these use photoelectric cells that produce an output depending on the brightness of the surrounding light. Cars and other vehicles often use this for the automatic switching on of headlights when it gets dark. And in a similar way, street lights can be turned on or off automatically depending on the surrounding ambient light levels. Next, we have magnetic sensors. These measure the changes in magnetic fields. 
i.e. the signal output from the sensor changes depending on how the magnetic field changes. Cars use these for anti-lock braking systems and detecting any form of magnetic field changes, so for example mobile phones and metal detectors. Next up we have moisture sensors. This measures the amount of moisture in, for example, soil. It does this based on the electrical resistance of the sample that's being monitored. It can be used to detect the presence of wood rot, especially in old and wooden structures. Monitoring moisture levels during food processing, for example, and monitoring moisture levels in soil for agriculture. Ongoing, now we have the pH sensors. Now these measure the acidity, again, for example, soil through changes in voltage. It can be used to monitor, therefore, acidity levels in soil for agriculture and monitoring acidity levels in chemical processes. Next up, we have pressure sensors. These measure the amount of pressure applied to it by the way of a transducer which generates different electrical currents. It can be used for measuring the gas pressure in a nuclear reactor, monitoring, monitoring vehicle tire pressure, or weighing lorries at weighing stations. The penultimate sensor for us to look at is proximity, and this simply detects the presence of nearby objects. Typical examples are detecting how close a vehicle is for other objects for automatic braking, and we looked at that in the last video and detecting when a face is close to a mobile screen and switching off the screen when the phone is held up to the ear. And finally, we have temperature sensors. So these measure the temperature of its surroundings or of a specific object. And obvious examples include monitoring heat in a chemical process, monitoring temperature in a greenhouse, or monitoring temperature in a house as part of a central heating system. Now, as well as understanding what each sensor does and the sort of information it collects, it's important in the exam that if you're given an appropriate scenario or context, that you can pick and justify the most suitable sensors. So here we have a security monitoring system, say for a building or a workplace. Pause the video for a moment and have a think what sensors might be involved in this situation. So the most obvious ones would be infrared, proximity, pressure and acoustic, all useful ways of detecting an intruder. Now you might have put some others, what's important in the exam is that you justify your answer and why it would be appropriate for the context given. We'll try one more. So here we have an automated uh, large scale commercial greenhouse. Pause the video again and have a think what sensors could be involved in this situation. So here um, we've got all sorts we could easily justify. Gas sensors, the amount of oxygen, CO2, humidity, temperature, light levels, moisture in the soil, the pH of the soil. Uh, a whole range of sensors which you could easily justify would be appropriate for this context. OK, so that's a um, summary on the screen of the sensors we've gone through and the various things they're designed to detect and measure. Pause the video and take some notes.